All right, so we're going to answer this question before us. It's asking us to solve this. Where is this less than zero? So we've got a quadratic inequality. Now, this is different to what we've seen previously because it hasn't been factorized for us. Now, we know that we need to sketch this thing. Now, in order to sketch it, I need to find my x-intercepts. Therefore, I'm first going to have to factorize it to find what those x-intercepts are going to be. So the first step here is recognizing that you have to factorize it to get the x-intercepts. So let us begin. I'm just going to begin by rearranging it a little bit just so it looks a bit prettier. All right. With my uh, square term first, then my x term, then my constant. That's what we're used to seeing it as. Now we need to factorize it. Now there are different ways to factorize a non-monic. It's non-monic because I have a two in front of my x or a negative two in front of my x squared term. I'm gonna show you the way I do it, but if you use the crisscross method, it doesn't matter. As long as you can factorize successfully, that's all that matters. So my method is I do it this way. I go, all right, the product has to be negative two times 15, which is negative 30. The sum has to be the coefficient of my x term. So in this case, it's one. What factors, so f, multiply to negative 30 and add to one? We think about it for a second, it's gonna be six and negative five. So six times negative five is negative 30. Six plus negative five is one, perfect. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x value right here and break it up into these factors. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna take negative two x squared, and then I'm going to write plus six x minus five x plus 15 is less than zero. That's a funny looking less than. What I want you to appreciate here is that six x minus five x is x. So I actually haven't changed anything here. The next thing you wanna do is you want to factorize by grouping. So I wanna take this and I wanna see what can I take out of this? Well, we think about it for a second, I could take negative two X out. So of this, I could take out negative two X. That would leave me with X here, and over here, it would leave me with minus three. Think about it, negative two X times X is negative two X squared, negative two X times negative three is plus six X. Over here, what could I take out? I could take out minus five. Now, the reason why I've taken out the minus as well is because what I want is this this bracket to look like this bracket. So if I take minus five out, I'm gonna be left with x minus three. And this whole thing is less than zero. We know that we've done this correctly because I've got x minus three here and x minus three there. If you haven't gotten that, you've done something wrong. We now continue on. I can now take out my common factor of x minus three. So that means I'm going to end up with x minus three. Then I've got negative two x here and minus five there. All of this is less than zero. Perfect, I now have my factorized form. X minus three, negative two X minus five is less than zero. What I can do now is find what my X intercepts are going to be. So to find my X intercepts, I take each of these and I solve it for zero. So, sorry, I take each of these, I set it equal to zero and then I solve it for X. So I'm gonna get X is equal to three, the negative two X minus five is equal to zero. What I'm going to end up with here after a bit of rearranging is X is equal to negative five on two because I'm gonna go five, yep, that. Then once I've got that, I can give this thing a sketch. Remember, we just want a quick sketch to help us out here. This thing does not have to be pretty. So I'm gonna come here, draw me some axes. Now I've got my one intercept at three and then another one at negative five on two. Then you have to think about the concavity of this thing. You could come up and look here. Do you see how I have a negative there or like a negative in front of my X squared term? That means this whole thing is going to be upside down. So too, you could come here and see that you've got a negative in front of the X value here. So the whole thing is going to be upside down as well. So we identify that this thing is flipped. So I can come here now and I'm going to draw it like this. Remember, this thing does not have to be pretty. It's just helping us get our answer. Next, we have to say, well, where is this less than zero? Well, it's less than zero here, and it's less than zero here. So that means my final answer, my final answer to this thing is going to be X is less than negative five on two, 
or x is greater than three. So x is less than negative five on two, or x is greater than three. It's not less than or greater to, you're not including the x-intercepts here. That is your final answer. Let's highlight it. Let's put it in a box. Like that. Perfect, and we're all done. Hopefully that made sense on how to approach that question. This was just the added step of factorizing it as well. Perfect, all right, with that, I will let you go. Hopefully you found this useful.